Hello everybody and welcome to this GCSE chemistry video about the Earth's resources and sustainable development. In this video we'll take a look at the different types of resources covering finite, renewable, natural and synthetic resources. We'll also take a look at what sustainable development means both for now and for the future. And then we'll finish by taking a look at some graphs, tables and charts which will be the sort of thing that you might be asked to look at in a test situation. Humans have been around on Earth for around 300,000 years, and in that time they've been using the resources from the Earth to help them to survive. These resources have predominantly come from the Earth's crust, but additionally resources have been taken from the seas and oceans and from the air as well. Humans use these resources for a variety of different things, for instance food and also building materials to provide shelter. Additionally, humans use energy resources to provide warmth and also transport. Sustainable development is a term that you hear quite a bit in GCSE chemistry and also if you study geography as well and its use encourages us to think about the impact that our actions have on the planet. If we break the term up into two parts, the word sustainable means that we can meet the needs of our current generations without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. And the term development is referring to new technology and new ways of doing things as we move into the future. As time goes on, there is going to be a growing population. That means more people will be around on the planet. As a result of this, we're going to need to use raw materials for the resources that the humans need. We'll also need more land to be used for living space, but also for quarries and for mines to produce the resources that we need. There'll also be a greater demand on energy use, and so we're going to need more space to provide renewable resources, or we're going to need to extract more fossil fuels from the Earth's crust. And additionally, a growing population means that there's going to be more waste produced and potentially more pollution. And so the challenge for sustainable development is to improve such things as agriculture in order to provide more food for this population. And that might be crops that grow quicker, or it might be crops that we get a better yield with, or it might be more efficient techniques for farming. Or perhaps it might be more efficient industrial processes to provide things such as fertilisers. A finite resource is a natural resource that will run out one day because it's not being replaced as fast as it's being used up. This type of resource is also sometimes called a non-renewable resource and you come across that term in the GCSE physics course as well for non-renewable energy resources. Examples of finite resources then do include the fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas, but they also include other things such as minerals and metals that are found in ores in the Earth's crust. These are all non-renewable materials. A renewable resource is a substance of some economic value that can be replaced or replenished at the same rate or perhaps even faster than it takes to draw that supply down. An example of this might be wood that you could use as a fuel, but also something such as a crop or some sustainably caught fish. Natural resources are things that will form without any input from humans, and we've been using this type of resource for thousands and thousands of years. For instance, we've been using wood for both fuel and for timber and building materials. We've been using cotton for clothing and we've been using plants and animals for our food. As human civilization developed, we were able to supplement these natural resources with improvements in agricultural techniques. For instance, we are able to produce a higher yield of crops that we grow in fields by developing better and better fertilizers that we can use to support them growing. 
When we talk about the yield of something, we mean how much of that thing that we've got. And so if we're talking about a higher yield of crops, that means that we're able to grow more things in our field and produce more food at the end of it. Over time, a number of natural products have been replaced with synthetic products. And that means something that has been made by people from natural products from a variety of different steps and processes. The example that comes up the most in exam situations is wood, which was used for hundreds and hundreds of years, and this has gradually been replaced by plastic for a number of important applications. For instance, windows. This is probably the most common example that we use. We used to use wooden window frames, but now we use a polymer, typically something called UPVC. Another example is flooring, which used to be made of wood, and now we use a polymer resin in something called laminate flooring. Rubber is another example. We get rubber from the sap of a tree. However, certain polymers have been produced which are better than rubber for a number of uses, for instance, car tyres. One final example is cork, which we also used to get from trees, from the bark of trees. And we use cork for a number of things, for instance, stoppers placed in bottles of food. And now we typically use plastic for these stoppers because plastic doesn't interfere with the taste of whatever is being kept in the bottle. It's really common in GCSE chemistry to be presented with a table of data that you have to get to grips with and then use to answer some questions. So what we've got here is a table where I've listed four different resources, A, B, C, D, and along the top we've got three extra bits of data, how long it takes these resources to form in years, and the amount of this resource that gets produced each year in kilograms, and the energy content of this resource in kilojoules per kilogram. And the types of question that you could be asked would be, first of all, which of these looks like it is a finite resource and which looks like it's renewable? Well, the finite resources are the ones that are in limited supply and we cannot replace or replenish them at the same rate that we use them. And so if we zoom in here on the time taken to form column, resource A and resource C take 10 to the 6 years to form. That means a million years because 10 to the 6 is a 1 with then 6 zeros after it, 10 raised to the power of 6. And so the resources that take a million years to form are the fossil fuels, which are non-renewable. They are finite. And that tallies up if we compare it to the next column along. We make very little coal or oil or gas every year. And so C could be one of those three. And so could A. If they take a million years to be produced, then we're not going to make much at all each year. And so A and C look like they are the finite resources, and B and D look like they would be renewable. And that makes sense if you compare how long it takes these resources to be produced, five years and 10 years for D and B. So that isn't very long. And so provided we regulate the rate at which we use these resources, then this can be considered to be sustainable and the resource is renewable. We could also make a numerical statement and say that, for instance, resource A takes a million years to form, resource B takes only 10 years, and so that is 10 to the 5 times longer than it takes resource A to form, or 10 to the 5 times faster that we get B. Forming. And so that means it's five orders of magnitude faster to produce resource B than it is resource A. A different question that we could be asked might be about the energy content of these resources. And so we might be asked to recommend a resource to use. And so we might then be evaluating these data and coming to a conclusion. And so we probably wouldn't recommend fuel A or fuel C because they take too long to be replenished and they are finite. But they do produce a lot of energy. For instance, resource A produces twice as much energy as resource B, and resource C is three times as much. 
But in spite of that, it does take such a long time for these resources to be produced that it is probably not a viable option to rely on these in the long term. And so we're looking at resource B and D as our options. Now, we can produce the same amount of them each year, so that's not a factor. But B takes twice as long to produce as D. However, as a fuel, B produces greater than twice as much energy per kilogram of this fuel. So it is probably worth waiting the extra five years, even though that's twice as long, we get more than twice as much energy per kilogram afterwards. And so we can use numbers to support our answers. And usually in a question where we're asked to evaluate, it doesn't matter actually what we say, but how we support our answer and how we link ideas together. When you do chemistry exams, you will have to analyse at least one graph. So I'm going to show you a few graphs that are relevant to this topic about resources. The first one is to do with world population in billions over time for the last hundred years or so. And a common question might be, describe the trend that this graph is showing. And so the trend wants the general pattern, the relationship as time passes, what happens to the world population. And so the first thing to note is this line is going upwards. So the population is increasing. But if this was a two mark question, as it probably would be, it would want to know how consistently it goes up. And if we start at the beginning and go to the end, it is not a straight line. It changes at different rates. And if you take a look at the first 40 years or so, it changes far less from 2 billion to 3 billion population than it does in the second half from 3 up to 8. It's much steeper after about 1960. And that would be a good second mark to say that the world population is increasing at an increasing rate. And if this was a three mark question, you would probably indicate the point at which it started increasing significantly. And that looks like 1960 to me. But this is probably most commonly a two mark question. A follow up to this question might be suggest some problems that could be caused as a result of this growing population. And let's suppose it was a two mark question. That means you need to give a reason why this could be an issue and then develop it with an explanation as to why that causes a problem. And so it might be that we need to feed the population. So the population need to eat. And so that's a problem because it means we need to produce more fertilizers to increase the growth of crops. Or a different answer might be these people need energy. And so we will have to burn more fossil fuels to provide that energy and this will increase the carbon dioxide levels and this will have a problem of increasing global warming and potentially causing climate change. Or potentially we need more resources for building and wiring and things like that. So we would have to mine more things such as copper, which is a finite resource and might run out. Another type of graph that you could be asked to interpret might look at the use of energy resources over a particular time period. So in this graph, I show a time period between 1960 to the year 2020, and we're looking at two energy resources, wind and nuclear, and we're covering the percentage of the total energy generated in the UK. And so the question might simply be asked to describe the changes in the percentage of electricity generated in the UK between 1960 and 2020. And so to do this, we need to talk about both of the resources and we need to talk generally and then zoom in on some specifics using the numbers. So I've made this out of three marks, but it could be out of more. And so at first, let's just talk about the general pattern. The nuclear line is going up reasonably consistently, but not perfectly straight. It then peaks and then it goes down again slightly faster than it went up. The wind line is at zero at first for quite a long time. And then it starts to gradually increase and then it increases at a faster rate. 
And so we've done a pretty good job here of describing the patterns that these lines are showing for the different resources. But to enhance this answer further, we need to use the data from the axes. And so let's return to the nuclear line. The percentage of electricity generated using nuclear energy began at 1% in 1960, and it peaked at 10%. So it increased by 9%, but then it went down to something like 5% in 2020. So in that time period, it's only increased by 4%, but it did have a peak at 10%. We could enhance this further by saying, when did it peak? It peaked in the year 2000. And then we could also say that it became less than wind in the year about 2015. And for all of the time before that, a greater percentage of the UK's energy was generated from nuclear. And then if we take a look at the wind percentages, it was 0% for quite a long time, from 1960 to about 1995. It was 0%. And then it increased only very, very gradually up to something around 2010, and then it increased dramatically after that time. And then if we look at the actual percentages, the wind generation has increased from 0% to something like 10% in that time window. So you can see that what we've done here is we've taken our general pattern that we can see and we can describe, and then we've developed that by using the percentages, using the data from both of those axes. Now, there's a good chance that we wouldn't have need to have used all of the numbers that I've described here, but this is giving you an idea about how you can develop your answer. So in all likelihood, you'd get some marks for the general description of how the percentages have changed, and then you would maybe just get some marks for one of the comments about the point at which you got these changes. Finite resources are in limited supply, and therefore it is unsustainable to keep using them at our current rate. Additionally, converting these resources into synthetic materials has an energy cost and also produces waste. Both of these have an environmental impact in the form of using fossil fuels to generate that energy, which might increase the CO2 production, and that will contribute to climate change and waste needs to go somewhere and that might go into a landfill and that will take up space and also potentially leach chemicals into the surroundings near to the landfill. This means that we need to think carefully before we move forward into the future. We need to think about social considerations and this involves people and their jobs and their surroundings and their livelihood. We need to think about the economic factors and that means that producing these resources might generate a lot of income for people. And also we need to consider the environmental effects of extracting that resource and then processing it and disposing of it. Another way we can think sustainably is to try to reduce the amount of finite resources that we use and also to reuse and to recycle, both of which will save energy as well as resources because we aren't having to process the resources to make the product. Additionally, we can continue to carry out research into increasing the efficiency of industrial processes and reducing waste. This might include developing catalysts for processes. Catalysts allow us to carry out reactions at lower temperatures, and this will therefore reduce the energy requirements of a process and therefore reduce the environmental impact of the process. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.